Chrome tabs in Electron. Not these tabs, these kind of tabs. The kind of tabs that allow you to add, remove, reorder, and even persist after reopening the app. Obviously with separate renderers, so it's all running nicely on its own little thread. If you're interested, keep on watching. You'll find out exactly how to do this yourself. It's really not that hard, I promise. Well, would have been a lot easier if DeepSeek could have generated all this code for me. I'll be going through this pretty fast. So feel free to pause or play it at 0.5 speed. I'm looking at you, 2x people. Well, let's get right into it. Right, this is how I've set up my Electron project. There is one base window which encapsulates multiple child web contents view. We assign one web content view as the toolbar, which will contain our tab bar. And the other web contents view will be where the actual page content is shown. This log can have multiple web contents view representing each of the tabs page. So when we switch tab, the content changes also. Now let's dive right into setting up the project. For this example, I'll be starting from absolute zero. So that means first things first, we'll need to create our project using Electron VCLI tool. I'll have the link in the description below. Go ahead and fill in the name of your project. And we are going to go with React, TypeScript, and yes to the rest. CD into the directory, run install, and try launching the project. If it was set up correctly, you should see an Electron window pop up like this. Time to install dependencies. Bear with me. There's quite a few things here. For state management within each tab slash renderer, we will be using Zustand. Obviously, you can use anything else that is out there or just go with a built-in React use state, use context hook. For routing, we're gonna be using Tanstack Router. I've been really digging this library lately since the file routing is very similar to how Next.js works. As far as persistent storage go, we can simply use the Electron Storage package. This will allow us to restore tabs when user reopens the application. Add React icon because we're using a few of them and it's free. Frame of motion so that we can animate our tabs when inserting, removing, and reordering. In fact, Motion has a great example of tabs in the documentation. I'll leave a link below in the description. Tailwind Merge to merge Tailwind classes. Lodash for awesome utilities. And Immer to help modify immutable states in Zustand. Now let's make sure Tailwind is properly set up in our Electron Vt project. Sorry, we won't be using Tailwind 4.0 because that literally breaks the project. So I'd personally stay away from that for a while. According to documentation, we'll need to run a few commands. Since we are working in a TypeScript project, I'm going to change the config file to .ts and modify the export. You'll also need to modify the base.css file, add Tailwind directives, and the title bar and title button classes. These are extremely important if you want to be able to move the app around your screen when dragging the toolbar. You'll see where this is being used later in the video. Running the project and adding Tailwind classes seems to work. Before we start creating routes and pages, let's make sure we have configured Tanstack router in our Vt config. You may notice that we have some red squigglies when trying to import Tanstack router Vt. To fix this, we need to do two things. In Node.js TS config under the compiler option, add module resolution and assign it to bundler. Then install the Tanstack router Vt plugin. The error should now go away. If any of these particular libraries or packages interest you and you'd like me to make a deep dive on them, let me know down below in the comments. Let's start by creating our route. We must have a root route as that is required by Tanstack router. Layout route functionality is exactly the same as how layout routes work in Next.js. Add a lazy toolbar route so it only loads when needed, basically only in the toolbar renderer. And I'll do the same with the about and homepage by making it lazy so it won't be loaded in the toolbar renderer since it won't be needed there. In the root component, just make sure to import base.css and we'll just return the outlet. No need to modify or add any additional components. For the layout, we're going to set the background color and add a simple navigation menu. This route will encapsulate any other routes within the layouts folder. Don't worry about the create file route error. When we run, the route tree will automatically be generated and the error will disappear. Toolbar will be our entry point into rendering the tabs. 
this file is not inside our layouts folder, so it won't be affected by the layout changes. I am going to go ahead and import a few things that we'll create momentarily. So don't worry about it, we'll get there. I'll be doing this a lot throughout the video, just to avoid jumping back and forth between files. Inside the toolbar component, add a platform toolbar function that builds the tab bar with the correct padding to account for the macOS window traffic lights. Do you remember the title bar class we created earlier in our base.css file? This is where we are using it. By adding it here, it allows us to move the app around the screen by dragging the toolbar. Maybe I should have named it title bar. Oh well. <laughs> now we create our home page and about page. Honestly, these can really be anything. I just had DeepSeek generated me some placeholder content that looks half decent, so I can tell the two pages apart. Go ahead and delete the app.tsx file as we no longer need it and modify the main component. And notice that we are using create hash history here. This is super important if you want Tanstack router to work within Electron. We also need to make sure that we return a router provider which will allow Tanstack to manage our routes. Let's work on each of our individual tab and the tab bar. For the tab bar, this component will be the container that encapsulates our tabs. As I mentioned earlier, there's a great example on Motion's documentation that shows a sleek tab animation. So I've actually used that here, but modified it for our needs. You may have noticed that we are importing a new Zustand store that have not been created. Basically, we'll be using Zustand store as a middle layer to send IPC messages to our main process. I prefer doing it this way or else it can get pretty messy really quickly if IPC calls are located inside components themselves as they can be located really anywhere around the project. We'll start by using the reorder group motion component. Just like what the name states, it allows us to create a drag and drop reorderable list. Inside of that, wrap each of our individual tab with animated presence. This makes sure that we're able to use exit animation, which we are about to implement in our tab component. The show separator parameter determines whether there's a small line to the right of each tab. I've set the behavior to be very similar to how Chrome tab works. So how it should work is that the tab that's selected and the tab before the selection does not have the separator. This way, if the first tab is the one that's selected, obviously there's no previous tab, so we don't need to do anything there. As for our tab component, I know we haven't created it yet, but I'm just going to fill it in here first rather than jumping back and forth between files. And the last item in our list should be the button. Moving on to the tab itself. Start by defining the props. I am then going to wrap everything in a reorderable item, which can only be strictly used inside the reorderable group. Sorry, I made a mistake here. You actually don't need the style property, so you can omit that part. Instead, we're just going to use tailwind class name to change the color of our tabs if it's selected. Then inside the reorderable item component, add a motion span. Here it is important to add the mask image and the web mask image to the style. This will make our text fade out as it reaches the right side of each tab. Add the close button using the icon from React Icons, then create the separator using a simple div. Now that we've been using CN all over the place, let's create the utility function. We are just going to use the Tailwind Merge and CLSX. Time to create our Zustan store, finally. Start by creating a file named UseBoundStore. This is our global store for each tab, as in each tab that we create will have its own instance of this store. I am setting up the store in this particular way because it allows for each feature to have its own slice so the logic can be neatly separated. This setup will also allow for persistent state for each tab. The data will be stored in local storage. And using the partialized param, you'll be able to pick and choose which state you want to persist. Create a types folder, add tab slice dot d dot ts inside, and let's define the interface. It's important to encapsulate everything inside here with a namespace for organization purposes. For this feature, we'll call it tabs. 
Don't worry, we'll define tab info in just a bit. For now, define these variables and functions inside the tab slice. Create a new file called tab slice and we'll start implementing the interface we just created. Keep in mind here that this tab slice will be utilized only by our toolbar and not other content renderers. In the initialize function, we will make sure to restore all of our previous sessions tabs. We will create the IPC invokers and handlers in the next section. So just bear with the red squigglies for now. Here we just implement the set selected tab. Pretty simple. Then remove is a little bit more work. We have to account for what happens if we close the selected tab. Add tab is pretty simple as well. Same with reorder as we just pass in the newly ordered array. Now we will define the tab info type. Let's check out what other errors we have yet to fix. Okay, looks like we still need to create the use tool by initialization. So let's do that now. Go ahead and create the hook. This will be used for calling the tab slice initialize function and will return whether we have completed initialization or not. To actually be able to send messages to our main process and create tabs, we got to set up our preload scripts. In the index.d.ts file, add itabs API and define the interface. Cool. Now, if you check the tab slice file, those red squigglies should now be gone from our window object calls. Time to implement the invoke functions. In the same folder, create a tab file. Under tabs API, we simply invoke each of the function we just defined. We'll implement these functions in the main process in just a bit. Next, to not get errors during runtime when we call these functions, we'll need to expose the tabs API using the context bridge. Simply do that in the preload index file. Awesome. We are pretty much done with the renderer side of things. Let's now turn our focus on implementing the functionalities we need in our main process. Let's start by working on the main window. As I previously stated, I'll be using the base window as a container that encapsulates web view contents. Go ahead and add the needed imports. There'll be some stuff that we have yet to create, but just add them anyway, as we'll go over it in just a moment. Then create a base window variable. This will be our container for all our web content views. In the initialize main window function, assign the base window to electrons base window. Let's make sure to set show to false as we only want to show once base window is loaded and ready to be shown, or else we'll get a flashing white screen before content shows up. Auto hide the menu bar, set the title bar overlay to true, set the frame to false and title style to hidden inset. This combination is used to hide the title bar as we are creating our own custom one with tabs. Make sure to set the traffic lights position or else it will be in a weird position relative to the tabs. Add a call to set up main window event handlers, which we will implement in a bit. Create the toolbar and restore the tabs. Restore tab function will restore tabs in the background except for the one that needs to be shown for the user. That one will be loaded synchronously and then returned. Add both toolbar and main window to the base window content view and show the content. For the main window event handlers, we just need to add listener to app activate and before quit so we can show the window and save tabs before quitting. Then we add a helper function to get the base window. This is to help us when we implement IPC handlers in another file so we can reference the base window which contains the web contents view that we want to send messages to. In the show window function, we add a bit of logic so that when Veep does hot module reload while we're coding, it doesn't take focus off your editor and puts it on the app. In the index file, delete everything. And inside the app when ready callback, add init tabs, IPC handlers, and initialize main window. This is our startup sequence. Moving on to the tab handlers. This simply just handles IPC messages we get from the renderer process and assign them to the correct functionalities. 
Before we implement the tab functions, we need to deal with actually handling the toolbar creation at the correct position in the base window so it does not overlap the content. In the toolbar.ts file, we are going to define the toolbar height and set it to 32 pixels, along with the toolbar view, which is a reference to the toolbar web contents view, allowing us to easily send IPC messages directly to the toolbar. The create toolbar function will return a promise which will resolve when the toolbar has finished loading. One thing to take note here is with the resizing. When the base window resizes, we need to make sure to resize the toolbar view as well. Otherwise, you'll see some weird blank space next to the toolbar when resizing the window. I'll then go ahead and create a getter function for the toolbar height. We'll need this number to create the tabs content so it doesn't overlap the toolbar. We'll then add the get toolbar and resize toolbar functions. Nothing special here. You may have noticed that at the top, we have navigation routes imported. Let's go ahead and create that now. This is only used within the main process. I just wanted a central place in main where I can enter all the possible routes of the application rather than using string literals. In combination, let's also create some URL helpers. We'll need to add a get root function as the root will be different depending whether we're running in development or production environment. It is especially important to append the hash sign at the end of the root URL. As you may recall, we are using the hash router history and this is one of the requirements to make sure that that works. Moving on to the tab file. We create the tabs variable to keep track of each of the loaded content for each tab and select a tab variable to keep track of the content that needs to be in front and shown to the user. Implement add new tab, which simply gets the reference to the main window and makes sure that it is not null before we load the tab content, returning the ID of the web contents ID that was loaded. Load tab content is an async function that loads the URL in a web contents view, sets the background color, resolve the promise when the content is fully loaded, returning the newly created web contents view. In here, I'm also adding the new content view to the tabs variable we created above. Next, we have the show content function. This takes in the web content view and displays it. Note that we have to set the web contents bound so it does not overlap the toolbar. We remove all the resize listeners so that background tabs that are not shown to the user don't need to resize, while the new tab content that is shown is resized to fill the base windows bounds. Note that the add child view method can be used in a way that the same child can be added, which will bring that child to the view in front of all other content views rather than adding a duplicate. Close tab will just remove the tab from the view and release resources. Same with close all tabs. We'll also make sure to save tabs when closing so it persists through to the next session. Let's then add some getters with get tab, get all tabs, get tab IDs, and get selected tab. Do the same thing with setters. So we implement the set selected tab, making sure to save the selected tab, which we will be implementing using electron store in just a few moments. One thing I forgot is to add the get selected tab ID. So here we are. We then implement the reorder tabs function, which just sets the order of the web contents in the tabs variable and saves it. The save tabs function grabs all the tabs URL and makes it persistent. We will implement set tabs in the next section. Lastly, we have the restore tabs function, which grabs the previous sessions tabs from electron store and loads it. Only the selected tab will be loaded synchronously, hence the await, while other background tabs will be loaded asynchronously. Moving on to persisting tabs between sessions, we first create tabstore.ts file, and in here we'll initialize a new electron store and set tabs, get tabs, set selected, and get selected. That's really all you need. Let's test out our electron app with tabs and see if it runs. Great. It works. Let me know if you have any issues. If you're interested, I do plan on continuing with Electron for a few more videos, showing multi-tab auth with Superbase, integrating chassis and UI, setting up multiple themes, and possibly showing how to create an offline first app 
with local database that syncs with the cloud for each user. If that's up your jazz, feel free to hit sub. Remember to keep on learning, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.